course, there will be an exciting event Saturday in Temecula. A lot of them, they always uh, cook like chum. <laughs> but that is, that's not uh, actually the only thing in there. It's, uh, this is a, a great uh, um, uh, time that all the men can have the opportunity to teach. See, It's uh, going to be the, the 12 tribes of Israel. And uh, um, a lot of men are going to uh, share and have their assignments and to talk about the 12 tribes. Isn't that exciting? Yes. Amen. So, good afternoon. Good afternoon. And happy Mother's Day to all. When uh, Pastor Neil told me to, uh, uh, to preach uh, today, this Mother's Day, I said it's a great honor and a privilege to acknowledge uh, the one that God has put to take care of us and the giver of care in our lives. Uh, who amongst here are the mother? Um, one, two. All right, some of them are coming. One more, and that is, even though you're your mother, what's that? So uh, we can acknowledge you. Let's give God the glory for all the mothers in the house. <laughs> My mother is in San Diego. I I, thought, I told her to uh, to come, and she couldn't make it, but uh, she said record it. So I could, uh, so I could show it to uh, uh, to her the message. Okay. The title of my subject today is called a mother's love. Mothers are teachers. Mothers are disciplinarians. Mothers are clean ladies. Some mothers are gardeners and mowers of lawns and most mothers understand that baking cookies is more important than washing those too. Mothers are nurses and doctors and psychologists and counselors and chauffeurs and coaches. Mothers are developers of personalities, molders of vocabularies and shapers of attitudes. On the other side, mothers are soft. Voices saying, I love you. And mothers are a link to God, a child's first impression of God's love. Mothers are all of these things and much more and more. But today we will touch on the subject of a mother's love. We're going to be focusing more only on, on one mother, who is the mother of James and John, which is Mrs. Zibini. Mrs. Zibini um, is mother of is the mother of James and John. And, and can we open our Bibles to Matthew? There you go, Matthew chapter 20, 20 to 23. I didn't have it. Uh, um, Type over there, but uh, let me just read it to you. Then the mother of Zebedee's son came to Jesus with her sons and kneeling down asked a favor of him. What is it you want? He asked. She said, Grant that one of these two sons of mine may sit at your right and the other at your left in your kingdom. <laughs> I know what Jesus said. You don't know what you're asking, baby. You can drink the cup that I'm going to drink. We can, they answered. Jesus said to them, you will indeed drink from my cup, but to sit at my right hand or left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those for whom they have been prepared by my Father. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit may come and move this place, Father, from thy word. We pray that we will continue, Lord, to not only honor the mother, but also remember that these mother are the one who laid there for our lives and for us, Father God, to give the respect and honor. Hide me behind the cross of Christ, that we may see the Shekinah of Jesus Christ. 
In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Mrs. Simeon was aware of the teachings of Jesus about his kingdom. She was also aware of the fact that her sons James and John were close to him. There were two thirds of the inner circle of Peter, James and John. So she was certain that when the Lord formed his kingdom, that they would have positions of responsibility and authority. But in the first part of the sense, or in the same chapter, Jesus tells a story that must have disturbed her. You know. Let me tell you a story about a landowner who went out to find laborers. Early in the morning, they agreed upon a fair day's wage and started working. Then at noon, he went out and found some more. And they started working. Then towards the evening, he went out and found some more and they started working. Yet when the Lord paid them off, at the end of the day, they all received the same wage. It must have cost Mrs. Zebedee to wonder Will my sons really have positions of authority in the Lord's new kingdom? So when the opportunity presented itself, she came to the Lord. Matthew says that she bowed before him and made this request. When you establish your kingdom, I will request seats in your right and left hand for my two sons. We might very well criticize Mrs. Zebedee for her presumptuousness or rudeness, but since today is Mother's Day, maybe we ought to think for a few moments concerning some positive things about Mrs. Zebedee. We need also to recognize that when she came to Jesus, while Jesus did not grant her request, neither did he deny it. He simply reminded her of the cause of being seated on the right or left, and then told her, that it is the Father who decides who will sit it there. Number one. Now that are some of the good things about being serious, first of all, she came to the Lord, praying that her sons might be a part of his kingdom. And I can think of no more important task of motherhood than that, than to seek to ensure your children are a part of the kingdom of God. She prayed that her sons might be a part of the kingdom. I know that many mothers pray. Mothers, sometimes they pray out of necessity. And sometimes they pray because motherhood is not easy. But extremely difficult. My mother prays for me. She even said, I'll pray for you a thousand hell marriages. Amen. Even though she knows the magnitude or extent of attacks that I get in the servant of Christ, but it's wonderful to know that my mother and my church are praying for me. Amen? Amen. Amen. Mothers, do you pray for your children? When they ask you to pray, or sometimes if they don't ask you to pray, do you pray for them anyway? James Thompson tells about a time he came home and his son Ryan was a small baby. It had been a terrible day for his wife. Ryan had been sick and had cried all day long. And once as she was changing his diapers, the telephone rang and Shirley, his wife, which is Shirley Dobson, reached over to answer it before fastening up his diapers. Just then Ryan had an attack of diarrhea. She cleaned up that mess and put it in a clean, sweet, smelling clothes. Then she took him into the living room and fed him. As she was burping him, he threw um, up all over himself and her in the costume. Dobson writes, when I came home, I could smell the aroma of motherhood everywhere. Shirley cried out to him, was all of this in my contract? Sometimes mothers pray just out of frustration of it all. And sometimes in the frustration of trying to reach our children, we realize the difficulties of communication. It's hard. A 
friend of mine remembers very clearly the time he gave his two-year-old son, Steve, his very first responsibility. He told Steve to watch Susan, his baby sister, while he stepped out of the room. He had only been gone for a few moments when he heard a thump or a blow, and then Susan started crying. He rushed back in to find that Susan had fallen from the couch and was stretched out on the floor. Meanwhile, Steve sat there looking so innocent. But my friend said, Steve, I told you to watch her. Steve answered, I did. He watched her fall and he watched her cry. He did exactly what he was told to do. Being a parent is not easy. Is it easy for you to become a parent? Is it easy? No. Is it easy to take care of those two wonderful babies? <laughs> When the Noahs, the brothers, when your guys are growing up, is it easy for them? Sister Edna? <laughs> yes, it's very difficult. Sometimes it is filled with joy, and sometimes with sadness. Sometimes your children make you so proud, you want to pop your bodies. At other times, you can find enough handkerchiefs to dry your tears. One of my son called me at 2 o'clock in the morning. And just to tell me that his wife doesn't love her anymore. I cried. In tears, they made me pray for him right there and there in the telephone. I said to myself, what is this happening to my son? Is it because we're living in an evil world? After a month, my nephew called. Uncle, my wife is leaving me. What is going on with the generation? What is going on with the world we're living in? What good is it if our children are successful in making money and driving the fine in automobiles and living in good neighborhoods, but they don't know God? Right. What does it matter if they gain the whole world but lose their own souls? What does it benefit? Being a parent is not easy, it's difficult. But Mrs. Zebedee gives us a valuable example for she prayed earnestly that her sons would be part of this kingdom. We need the same concern for our children. I hope that in the heart of every mother and father here in the morning, this, this afternoon, that there is a burden to go to the throne of God and to pray for your children. To pray that they will be saved. Saved from eternal dimension. Saved from eternal life. Saved. And that's the place to begin. Amen. Secondly, she prayed that her sons would be involved in the work of his kingdom. Not only did Mrs. Seventy pray for her children, that her children would be part of his kingdom, but she Pray that they will be actively involved in the work of His kingdom. Maybe it's not enough just to be saved. It's good to be saved. Amen? Amen. I like that. Every time uh, Brother Dave comes in here, it's wonderful. It's great. I love to be saved. But churches are full of people content. They're just content. The people in the church are just content just to feel abused and Seats on Sunday morning or Sunday afternoon. There are plenty of people willing to sit back and receive the blessings. Bless me, Lord. Bless me, Lord. That's it. Just bless me. But I don't want to leave them finger to work. Bless it. Bless the Lord, but seldom do they get involved in doing any of the real work of the church when it's the last time you want a soul for Christ. Mm. Hallelujah. When it's the last time you invited somebody to church. But where does the spirit of service begin? It begins at home with mothers and fathers setting the example and praying that their sons and daughters might be involved in the work of the kingdom. I'm so proud of Isaiah and Princess and everybody and Jonathan and both of children and some of the children here. They're here to serve the Lord not because they have to but because they want to. God 
minister. Mrs. Zebedee prayed that her children would be actively involved in the work of his kingdom and we need to walk in her footsteps too. Number three, this is a short uh, uh, sermon. She had big expectations. Thirdly, Mrs. Zebedee had big expectations and I like that she, she didn't just pray that her children would be doorkeepers, you know. She wanted them on the right hand and left hand of Jesus. But when you're working in a kingdom, there are no higher position, see, than those on the right or left of the king himself. And that's what she wanted for her sons. We may consider Mrs. Zebedee's rash or hasty and presumptuous. But I admire her boldness. Too often we have settled for mediocrity in church. For too long we have been content with just barely making it through the door. For too long we have been content to sit back and things happen. We never try to lift a finger or ask the pastor, What can I do, sir? What can I do, pastor, to help and to build your church? Or to build God's kingdom and this church? It is time for some of us to take our positions on the right and left hand to become leaders, molding and fashioning the outreach of the church, taking wind in the empire for Christ. We have to go to the communities and go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in. That thy house, God's house, will be filled. Amen? Mobilizing to make sure the message of Christ goes into all the world. And it's time. It is time to strive for excellence, to reach for the very there, the very best there is, where the Lord calls us to be his disciples and to be effective laborers in his kingdom. I don't know if you remember Irma Bombeck. Probably you remember Pastor, right? Amen. These two younger daughters. God saying as he was a creating mother. I am close to creating something very much like myself. I suppose that this is why today is very special because we recognize that mother's love is probably the closest example we have to God's love. It is a love that goes through the valley of the shadow of death mm. to bring life into being. And it's a love that sacrifices itself over and over again. It would be even there to lay down its life for its own offspring. The story is told out in World War II. And the Holocaust that took lives of millions of people, of Solomon Rosenberg and his family. It is a true story. I have my compadre here, a retired Air Force man. Solomon Rosenberg and his wife and their two sons and his mother and father were arrested and placed in a Nazi concentration camp. Listen to this. It was a labor camp and the rules were simple. As long as you can do your work, you are permitted to live. When you become too weak to do your work, then you are exterminated. So Rosenberg watched his mother and father march off to their deaths. And he knew that next would be his youngest son. David, because David had always been a frail child. Every morning, I mean every evening, Rosenberg came back into the barracks after his hours of labor and searched for the faces of his family. When he found them, they would huddle together, embrace one another, and thank God for another day of life. But one day Rosenberg came back and didn't see those familiar faces. He finally discovered his older son Joshua in a corner huddled weeping and praying he said Josh tell me it's not true Joshua turned and said it is true Papa today David was not a strong enough to do his work so they came for this but where is your mother asked Rosenberg oh Papa he said when they came for David he was afraid and he cried. Mama said, there's nothing to be afraid of, David. And she took his hand and went with him to be exterminated. 
done his mother with others, sacrificing. This is your day. May God bless you in it. And I pray that there is someone here who has never experienced the love of God. It's so close to the love of a mother that this will be your time of decision. And I pray that you felt that you have had to walk through the valley alone so many times that you will recognize that there is a hand reaching out to you saying, there is nothing to be afraid. I will go with you until the end of time. And I pray Amen. that you will recognize that the one who already gone through the valley of the shadow for you had made it possible for you to live forever. A mother's love is the fuel that enables a normal human being to do the impossible. He extends his loving invitation in much the same way that a mother opens the doors of hope and invites her children to come back again and he invites you to live home. I just want to thank you for all the pastor, for all the mothers that's in here. And before I call pastor comes, let's bow our hands and we'll close it in prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for our mothers to whom you have entrusted the care of every precious human life from its beginning in the womb. You have given to woman the capacity of participating with you in the creation of new life. Grant that every woman in this place may come to understand the full meaning of that blessing which gives her an unlimited capacity of selfless love for every child she may be privileged to bear and for all your children. Watch over every mother who is with child Strengthen her faith in your fatherly care and love for her, for her unborn baby. Give her courage in times <coughs> of fear or pain, understanding in times of uncertainty and doubt and hope in times of trouble. Grant her joy in the birth of her child. To mothers, you have given a great privilege and responsibility of being child's first teacher. Grant that all the mothers may worthily foster their children. Foster the faith and following the example of Mary, Elizabeth, and the holy women who follow Christ. Help mothers to grow daily in knowledge and understanding of your Son and our Lord Jesus Christ and grant them the wisdom to impart this knowledge faithfully to their children and to all who depend upon. Thank you, Lord, we beseech you to send the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, to all the mothers who sorrow for children that have died. And we ask your blessings to all to whom you have entrusted the motherhood, and may your Holy Spirit constantly inspire and strengthen them. And we ask you, the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you, to the Holy Spirit, one God, world without, and amen. Amen. Uh, can I call all the mothers to read in the front?